Okay, let's talk about egg development. Fortunately, I've got some pictures, and I'm going to have them on here, that uh, Sarah Whitby out in Washington State, she actually drew these things. It's amazing. And they, where I saw them originally was in the Purebred Pigeon Magazine. Maybe some of you get that magazine and seen them. But what it is, it just shows a series of the development of, of the eggs as it, as it matures. And it's interesting. And it also has a value to me because I do a lot of fostering. I, I take a lot of these fancy breeds that, that are slow to breed. I take their eggs and I put them under another pair of birds. We call them pumpers or fostering or whatever you want to call it and let them raise them. And by looking at these eggs and being able to identify what stage they're in, then I know uh, I put a date on it, basically a date of the hatch. Um, and not the hatch, but the date of the laying. And then I, I'm able to move those, those eggs around. You can't just take a 10-day old egg and put it under a, a bird and just lay the egg because it, it won't work out that good. So anyway, let's get right into that. This first picture here that I'm going to show you is just a uh, sample of some different eggs and the egg sizes uh, that, that she did. And you can see that pigeon eggs about medium-sized egg for sure. The, the next picture you're going to see is a new egg. And this new egg shows the egg. It shows all the different components of the egg. And it shows a little red uh, fertilization spot disc that's in the in the yolk of the egg. And that when it when that yet egg is laid, if it's fertile, it has that little red dot in it. The second shot is two days older, and the egg's changing a little bit already, but not not much. And notice the air sac at the top. That's one of the things that's significant about an egg, is the the uh, the air sac at the top. That's that's something I'll tell you about in just a minute. Okay, then we skip on to the fourth day. And the fourth day now, we see our little little pigeon being formed in there. Uh, we see that he is attached to the to the yolk, and the yolk has blood vessels that run out from the baby pigeon, and they go into the yolk and they absorb the, the, the yolk, which is their source of food during this period of time. And, and then they take that, and then they grow, and they grow pretty rapidly. So it's amazing how fast they grow. Our next picture here is five days. And the egg is really transforming now. You start able to see some of the features of the bird. You see that the egg yolk is getting smaller. Uh, and that's where that is. And now let's look at the, the egg when it's seven days old. As you see, it's transforming itself now. It's uh, showing much more detail with the bird, the eyes, the beak, the whole deal. And then next is a ninth day drawing. And it, it shows this, and like you, like I said earlier, the, the egg is really, really uh, changing, and it grows so fast, two days. Look what it's done in just two days. And, and next is 11 days. 11 days old. Everything is just moving along. If you if you if you counter these eggs every day and saw how fast they grow, it'd blow your mind. But it but it is amazing how fast they can grow. Now, our last photo is a, basically a mature chick that's getting ready to hatch. Let me go back and explain something to you about the air sac. The air sac on these eggs is responsible for the transfer of carbon dioxide and oxygen. This egg actually, the the oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange from from the outside to the inside. If the, if the egg couldn't do this, if the shell wasn't porous, then this chick could not make it because it's, it's getting all its nutrients and, and all its growth from the egg itself. And like with the human, it doesn't work that way. Like with, with, with other animals, they actually get the blood flow from, from their mother. But with pigeons, they get it all from the egg, the egg yolk. And then they use that air pocket and that air pocket it's where they transfer the oxygen and the, and the carbon dioxide. Okay, let me tell you why, how I use this in my pigeon breeding. What I do is I take a magic marker, fine tip magic marker. I go out when my eggs are laid. I usually do this about every two or three days. I go through and I check all the eggs. First thing I do is I check to see if they're fertile. And the way I do that is I candle it. Now they make egg candlers and all. This is a little flashlight here. Uh, 
and it's pretty bright as you can see and it just holds one battery it's about these are about ten dollars this is a good one but this flashlight is perfect for candling a pigeon egg if you can see here and all I do is take that egg and put it on that light and I look at it I can see if that egg is fertile and I can also see how long it, how old it is by by looking at the diagrams that I just showed you I can tell the age of this egg I then go back and I put this egg and write on this egg the breed and I write the date that I think it was laid. So it might be two or three days old, but I'll back up based on the development and I'll put the date as close to the date as I can get of when I, when I think it's laid. You can usually use an egg, you can foster an egg out probably three days on either side but I'd like to keep it at three. Some say you can do it longer than that. One of the unique things about eggs, if you take an egg away from a bird and it isn't like a chicken egg, you have to do something with this egg. This egg has to be moved daily for it to stay fertile. A chicken egg, uh, they lay the eggs, chickens lay their eggs in a nest and they lay like 15 or 18 or 20 eggs, whatever it is they're gonna do. Then they sit on it. A pigeon lays one egg, and then it skips a day and then it lays a second egg. And normal, if the pigeon does exactly what it's supposed to, it doesn't incubate that egg until the second egg is laid. And that gives them, uh, makes it so the eggs will hatch all about the same time. I'm sure you've seen them when they set on them in the beginning and there'll be a difference in the size of the squab, but that's not a problem. But the main thing this diagram will do for you is it'll help you discern what the age of the egg is so you can foster it out. I write the date on it and I write the breed on it with a uh, felt tip magic marker. And that's what I do uh, and, and use it and foster my birds. We'll be right back right after this break. We have some more pigeon information for you, so stay tuned. Hi, this is Jerry Gagne, Foy's Pigeon Supplies, oldest pigeon supply company in the United States. When Danny Joe approached us about being a part of this great project, we were really excited. If you're looking for pigeon supplies, if you're looking for pigeons, I hope you'll give us a call. Foy's Pigeon Supplies, we're on the internet, just type in Foy's. Or if you'd like to call us, it's 1-877-355-7727. Ask about our 204-page all-color catalog. We'd be glad to send it to you. Color Pigeon Loss, featuring 28 breeds of fancy pigeons, high-performance Turner Rollers, we have birds available at all times. Capuchins, Saxon Monks, Saxon Priests, Swiss Crescents, Ice Pigeon, Saints, Frillbacks, Archangels, Starling, Figuritas, Old German Owls, Chinese Owls, Satinets, Swallows, Saxon Shields, and much, much more. For breed availability, visit www.colorpigeons.com. For purchasing, pricing, and shipping info, call toll-free 1-800-527-0918. Murin Nagel, better known as Dr. Pigeon by his friends, is known by his one eye cold treatment. It's called one drop, one time. It only takes one drop, it only takes one time. Every breeder needs at least one bottle of one drop, one time to keep in their loft for those nasty eye colds. They're available at Boys Pet Supply, New England Pigeon Supply, and Pro Flight Supply. And remember, the next time you buy pigeon supplies, be sure to include one bottle of one drop, one time. For today's pigeon tip, I got something new that uh, the guy that works for me, Billy Ray, came up with this idea, this idea of necessity. We had a had a toolbox out in the in our storage building, like we got a whole lot of junk out there, like most people's. And he came up with the idea of putting the one of the float valves in a toolbox. And it works so good. Uh, I mentioned previously on a couple of months ago on a show about I'd made a deal with people out in California about buying, uh, uh, selling their their uh, automatic waters. And they got a real good automatic water. Problem is, we had terrible mis uh, miscommunication somewhere. I couldn't I could never talk to anybody. Nobody knew anything. They didn't have any ready and all that. And, uh, I had people actually call me and ordered multiple orders, and uh, I just decided that, you know, we'd make one like this. This is a this is a prototype. It's functional. We've got two or three of them made, but I want to show it to you. It, what it is? It's a toolbox. That's all it is. You can see it right here. Just a toolbox. 
All right, what we did is we hooked up, this is the hose, fits directly to a, a garden hose or whatever. We have underground watering because we have automatic orders on all our pens. You notice it's got two holes in it. Actually, what we can do is we put, put it up between two lofts that's separated by either a wall or by wire, and this one water will water two different lofts. That saves you a lot of time. We have lofts that are eight by 12, and we have two waters on, on each loft, and that's, that's it for all of them. Inside, you'll see the valve, and I'll get a close-up of this in a minute and so you can see it, but it's a little PVC valve that handles high pressure. And the good thing about it, it's got a little wing nut on it. You just adjust the, the float, it fills up to a certain amount, and it stops letting any water in. Save you a lot of time, and I'm... I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he told me something one night we were talking. He raised the exotic birds, African greys, and the hook bills and stuff. And he came up with his underwater, I mean, uh, automatic water system thing he picked up out of in Australia, which is it's a great idea. But he told me something. He said, if you got a hobby like this, the least amount of time that you have to spend with them, the more you'll enjoy them. And what he's saying is, if you got automatic waters, you don't have to worry about the water anymore. They got clean water. With this thing, it keeps all the dust out. It keeps all the feathers out. It keeps all the green slime out. It keeps everything out. And I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm working on an idea right now to use this same thing. We're going to fix it where it won't freeze on the inside. But anyway, his point was, anything you can do that will shorten the amount of time of the things that you must do with your birds, dogs, whatever, cats, whatever, the more you will enjoy it. When you know when you get home from work, you got to spend an hour out there feeding and water, then that ain't fun. So think about this. We got some of these available. We make them for you. Custom hose or whatever. They come with about a three foot hose, which is, should be all you need. But anyway, that's our new water here at Color Pigeons and More. I hope you like that. If you're interested, we got a toll free number on here, so you can give us a call. Watching Color Pigeons and More, the Pigeon TV show that covers all aspects of the pigeon hobby. Today's show has been brought to you by Foy's Pet Supplies since 1887, America's oldest bird supply company. Dr. Pigeon Proven Pigeon Products, 18 to choose from. Color Pigeon Lofts, featuring 27 show breeds and high performance rollers. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Be looking for us right here on the web.